Right guys, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration here of my problem. The uh, supercharger is constantly engaged. This flap here, this flap here um, fluctuates slightly when you start, but it doesn't, doesn't close um, when you put your foot down on the throttle. And I think this is probably caused by a blown MOSFET in the ECU. So I'll start the engine now. Have a look down here as well. You can just see, and I put white paint on it, just there. That's the clutch flywheel to the supercharger, which um, constantly engages. Um, at the moment, I've disconnected the plug here, so you'll see that this clutch wheel down here won't won't move. All right, until I plug it in. So let's let's start the engine. So that's with the uh, supercharger plugged in by the little barrel fuse here. Uh, sorry, by the barrel connector. And when I rev the engine, this flap here should close, but it doesn't. Here we go. So at the moment, the air is just coming out the... Uh, the tube here and it's not being put back into the engine. Okay, this is actually a left hand drive version of my car. You open the bonnet by pressing that lever and that gets it into the fully upright position, makes it easier to work. Make sure you disconnect the batteries as well and make sure they're disconnected for a good sort of 10 minutes to make sure there's, there's no current and residual charge. Then just simply unscrew the ECU cover there and make sure you keep the screws um, you can access them all and it's a posi drive 2 to undo those screws there and there's the cover lifted off now at the back there is your is your ecu that's what we need to remove and have a look at see if we can replace the mosfet the clips only go in one way just be careful take your time it's quite easy to work out what's going on and the lever once you pull them up, also also actually pull the pins out of each of the connectors um, so that you can easily remove them. There's quite a few to connect. They can't go in any other way apart from the way that they came out. Okay, keep the wires out of the way. Um, there's actually other wires that you need to disconnect. Um, there's a control module that's piggybacked onto the ECU, so you need to remove those plugs as well in the same manner. Take your time, it's easy to break something here, so you just want to make sure that you um, easily ease out the levers of each of the plugs. There. There's a long screw at the back here that you need to undo. Um, once you've got that removed, keep hold of it. Now 
the ECU should be able to pull up and out. So that's how you remove the ECU from a Mercedes CLK as well as the SLK is very similar. Let's get this on the bench. Here I've actually just connected an earthing strap to a wrist band to make sure that I don't have any anti-static which could potentially damage the circuit board. The MOSFET that we're going to replace is highlighted just red there and there's an image there of what it looks like close up. Just move these springs slightly with a screwdriver, keep them and um, you can reuse them. Obviously they need to be in there to keep everything secure. Now this is a very important picture. It shows a plastic insulation pad that actually has come off the MOSFET. It took me a while to work out because it kept grounding and it wasn't working properly. So when you put in the new MOSFET, you're going to need to put that plastic shielding back on that new one. Apply a little glue, that way you prevent any um, issues with grounding against the case when you put the spring clips back on. So to remove the old MOSFET, heat up the solder on each leg, take your time and pull the leg up gently. You should end up with three neat little holes on the PCB. Try not to overheat it because you could damage these pads. Then position the new MOSFET in the same manner as the old one and apply new solder to each of the legs so that you have a nice soldered leg into each of those pads and is ready to reassemble as in reverse. Right guys, I've just put the ECU back in after changing the MOSFET. All the wires now back in place. So, moment of truth. And what I'm hoping to see is down here See where there's like white lines on the outer edge of that disc there? Well, that was spinning constantly when the car started, and it shouldn't do. It should sit at idle and only start spinning when it gets to about 2,300 revs. So let's start this guy up and see what happens. Oh, something sounds better. Let's have a look. Oh, your beauty! It's not moving. That's a great time. So you can see that little white line on there is the outer clutch face. And I was told that this was going to cost me a brand new supercharger from Mercedes at about £1,500. I could maybe get a second-hand one and I was quoted £500 to supply and fix. I've just bought a MOSFET that cost me £4.99. Let's give it a rev and let's hope that this supercharger kicks in. Here we go. Here's the throttle. Right, let's watch and see. Climbing, climbing, climbing. Oh, yeah, yo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, beauty. One more time. Oh, look at that. Engaging, disengaging. Two and a half thousand. Kicks in now. Happy days. Happy days. Let's uh, let's take off the pipe here and see see if it's flat, which which should be working now. Now that the superchargers engaging let's, let's do that all right guys so um problem problem now fixed i now have a fully working 230 compressor again supercharger is behaving and the bypass valve here uh there's two of them right now because um this one here was 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 the original one for the for the car um i took it apart to have a look inside and from doing that i may have unfortunately um upset something so fortunately for me i bought another one here off ebay it's a second hand one and it's working absolutely fine so let's give it a rev and you can see now that the flat works in conjunction with the proper so she's fully functioning again Thanks again guys, that's a fantastic forum, never would have got it sorted without you. Just need to put the cover back on here, swap this one over, 
put it back into uh, so that it, the noise is being filtered through the air, the air filter, which keeps it nice and quiet. Unless you like the sound of this, which is really just acting as a dump valve right now. So thanks again, guys. Speak to you soon.